Good afternoon. My first piece is Everybody Ought to Have a Maid from the musical A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum by Stephen Sondheim. I play a henpecked Roman senator, Senex, who is singing saucily about the benefits of keeping a maid about the house. Maids like me I'm neat. I like maids. They're neat. <laughs> Something no household should be without. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a working girl. Everybody ought to have a lurking girl to putter around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a mean eagle. Consistently congenial and quieter than a mouse. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delicious tidying up the dishes neat as a pin? Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delightful sweeping out, sleeping in? Everybody ought to have a maid. Someone whom you hire when you're sort of help to offer you the sort of help you never get from a spouse. Fluttering up the stairway, shuttering up the windows, cluttering up the bedroom, buttering up the master, puttering all around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a working girl. Everybody ought to have a lurking girl to putter around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a serving girl, a loyal and unswerving girl, who's quieter than a mouse. <laughs> oh, oh, think of her at the dustbin, especially when she's just been traipsing about. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delightful living in, giving out? Oh, everybody <laughs> ought to have a maid. Someone who infecting you your slip or will be winsome as a whip or will and graceful as a grouse. <laughs> Skittering down the hallway, flittering through the parlour, tittering in the pantry, littering up the bedroom, puttering all around the house. <laughs> Everybody ought to have a bed. Everybody ought to have a working girl. Everybody ought to have a lurking girl to put around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Someone who's efficient and reliable, obedient and pliable, and quieter than the mouse. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't she be so nimble, fiddling with her thimble, bending down? Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delightful, cleaning up, leaning down? Everybody ought to have a maid. Someone who's as busy as a bumblebee, and even if you grumble, be as graceful as a grouse. Wriggling in the ante room, giggling in the living room, Jiggling in the dining room, wiggling in the other rooms, puttering all around the house. My second piece is from The Trestle at Popelick Creek by Naomi Wallace. I play 15 year old Dalton Chance, who has been imprisoned for murder. In this scene, he is reliving the events which led to the death of Pace a girl who challenged him to outrun a train. <coughs> Tell them I'm ready to talk. Hey, hey, I wanna talk now. <laughs> Open the door, I got something to say. Pace wanted to make that run that night. I wouldn't do it. I was afraid. I know I was angry. But I didn't touch her. I was... Upside down. I was. God damn it. I told her to run it alone. Pace never 
could say no to it there. She stood on the tracks. She was covered in sweat. I stood below the trestle. And she looked so small up there. Near a hundred feet above me. But until she started to run, I never thought she'd do it without me. I could hear her footsteps. Fast, fast. No, no way. I won't be your damn witness. You're warped. That's what you are. Everybody says it. Stop. You better stop. God damn you, Penny's Creek. must have slowed down and lost her speed when she was calling to me. <coughs> Kate started to run back, but she knew she'd never make it. And then she turned. Even from where I was at, I, I, I could see she was shaking her head back and forth like she was saying, No! 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 She didn't want to die. And then she did something funny. Haste couldn't even s swim and there was no water in the creek. But she was going to dive. And this time, I watched her. Haste lay beside the trestle. She wasn't mashed up from the fall. Only the back of her head. I started to shout at her. I called her every name I could think of. Even some that she taught me herself. And then... And then I did something. Something I can't. I don't know. It was, it was maybe... Maybe it was... Unforgivable. I knelt down beside him. Pace never let me kiss her. Like that. So I did. And she didn't try to stop me. How could she? That's what I can't forget. She once said to me, Dalton, you can't take anything from me that I don't want to give you. But then she opened her mouth. She was dead. But she opened her mouth. And I kissed her. The way I'd always wanted to. And she let me. She let me. That's what I can't forget. <laughs>